The U.S. Navy has 11 aircraft carriers in its fleet, and they require frequent maintenance and overhaul for general upkeep, as well as to keep abreast with the latest technology. So how much and how long does it take to overhaul this mammoth vessel? Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. On today's feature, we will look into the maintenance as well as the critical refueling and overhaul process on the U.S. Navy's aircraft carrier fleet. It's the complete overhaul of the ship. You take it from coming from deployment and taking it down to nothing and building it completely back up. It keeps the life of the ship longer. It sustains our life of the ship for the carriers. It's important because people don't realize that sustainment is what actually keeps the fleet going. The aircraft carriers are the backbone of aero-sea warfare in the U.S. Navy. The increased tension and instability in global maritime put immense pressure on both the vessels and their crew to be at an optimum level at all times. Both the ship and the crew wore hard from the excessive use in the harsh and often unforgiving sea condition. In order to extend its service period, about halfway of its 50 years of life, the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier needs to undergo mid-life refueling and complex overhaul. My officer said, in course 258, check course 26, line, sir. This challenging and industrial undertaking involves replacing the nuclear fuel, general maintenance, and system upgrade of the entire ship. The carriers also operate on a 32-month deployment cycle, which allows for shorter scheduled maintenance and repair that typically lasts for six months. The vessels undergo their maintenance and overhaul at the Norfolk Navy Shipyard and Puget Sound Naval Shipyard located on both coasts of the United States. The ship enters the dry dock, which is then closed off from the sea. Once enclosed, water is then drained out, exposing the whole of the vessel resting on pre-positioned keel blocks. The RCOH, which stands for the Refueling Complex Overhaul, is a once in a carrier's life maintenance period the ship, due to its hull form and its capability, actually has the lifespan of about 25 years. So the beauty of an RCOH is that it's this gift of 25 years more of service, uh, and obviously it takes hard work to accomplish that, um, but that's the whole reason why we're here. For overhaul, the entire process is meticulously planned and calculated, as it is both time and resource consuming. The midlife critical refueling and overhaul on USS Nimitz, CVN-68 in 2001, took five years of planning and three years of execution. For the latest critical refueling and overhaul on the CVN-74, it includes refueling the ship's reactor and extensive modernization to over 2,300 compartments, upgrades in the propulsion plant, flight deck, catapult combat systems, and the island. This is scheduled to be completed in 2025, involving 4,000 crew and costing a staggering $2.9 billion. Once maintenance or overhaul is completed, the dry dock is refilled with water so the vessel can be refloated and removed from the dock. 
the aircraft carrier is ready for deployment and home to about 6,000 sailors that will reside on this newly overhauled, refurbished, and upgraded vessel. A career on the aircraft carrier can be both exhilarating and daunting at the same time. About 2,500 people work with the aircraft that operates from the aircraft carrier, whether on the flight deck or the three hangar bays below the deck. The remaining works around the clock below the flight deck with very little opportunity to bask in the warm sun during their deployment. Their living condition neither offers comfort nor privacy. As the aircraft carrier is nuclear powered, it does not require a massive space for an engine room. This enables it to provide its residents the amenities that are not available on the other Navy fleets, including a grocery shop and a barber. On occasions when the flight deck is not in use, it hosts social gatherings and events to boost the morale of those on board. The fate of those in the U.S. Navy's destroyer vessels is not far from those in the aircraft carrier. The multi-mission surface combat vessel is capable of anti-air and anti-service warfare, and the crew is quick to adapt to changing conditions and missions. The 9,000-ton destroyers measure about 500 feet long and 59 feet across and have very little space to give comfort to the 300 enlisted and 30 officers on board. The berthing area consists of bunks stacked three high in a small confined space. The other thing, uh, you know, something that I tell all of our new sailors who check in with me, is uh, we, we do our best. We give our absolute very best in everything that we do. The crew is expected to perform their duties at any time, so their health and well-being are taken into consideration. Those in the destroyer vessels are provided with a small gym facility for them to carry out their physical exercises. When there is no flight operation, they can use the helicopter landing deck for their activities. One of the challenging elements faced by the U.S. Navy crew on deployment is something that they have no control over. The weather. The rough seas may not be felt by big vessels like the aircraft carrier, but for the destroyer vessels, its crew may be more susceptible to feel motion sickness, especially during heavy seas and bad weather. It is this challenging condition that builds strong camaraderie and fellowship amongst shipmates. The barely comfortable living conditions long working hours and deployment period, very dangerous and high-risk work environment, all the elements that do not make an appealing career prospect. It indeed takes an exceptional individual to commit their life to face these challenges so that others can live. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.